All right, this is a summary of LifeLack, uh, mostly part one, uh, and to avoid spoilers. So keep in mind the book's got four parts. It's really important to remember, and they sort of each have different focuses happening. Uh, and often chapters will begin with a flashback, which is italicized, so you can sort of tell that it's different. Uh, and it's really important to know there's four different types of robots. There's the automata, uh, which is basically like a, a vacuum that you know, drives around. It doesn't think for itself, but it can kind of do basic tasks. Uh, machina, so a machine like a mech that a human being climbs inside and can operate that way, like an exoskeleton, like a, a robot body for a human. And then there's the logica, and this is basically uh, an example of AI. So they can think, they can talk, they can do things for themselves, but they are, of course, bound by the three laws of robotics. Then there's also a fourth category that's sort of mythical, where we're not, we've heard of it, maybe it existed, maybe it didn't, but it's an Android human, it's from the 100 series, and they were all thought to be destroyed after World War 4.0. So the three laws of robotics uh, are actually by a guy called Isaac Asimov from 1942 in his short story, Runaround. So just think about how long ago that is and how interesting it is that these laws of robotics were created that long ago uh, and that they're appearing in a more, much more modern book uh, like this one. So the three laws are there. Uh, robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. So they can't hurt humans. A robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. So you can't use a robot to fight another person, to kill another person, to commit murder or something similar. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. So as much as possible, the robot's going to look after itself, but most importantly, it's going to look after humans and it's going to obey orders, which is important, of course. In this uh, what we have are these three laws of robotics with slight changes, as you can see. Uh, your body is not your own, your mind is not your own, and your life is not your own are the additions to these three laws, which are quite famous and quite well. In terms of characters, we've got Eve in the middle. She's the main character. Uh, at the top, we've got some characters that are mentioned in the flashbacks. We're assuming Eve is you know, the main character of the flashbacks, but we're really not sure yet. Uh, Cricket is a little robot. Ty is a member of the Fridge Street gang, which are one of the enemies of Eve, the people trying to get her. Uh, then there's Kaisa, uh, which is her dog that has a dog brain. Uh, Faith, Gabriel, Ezekiel are other characters that will come up later. Lemon Fresh is her best friend. And the preacher, again, is someone who's trying to chase Eve. Grandpa is Grandpa Silas is her grandpa. Uh, and the two main groups trying to get her are the Brotherhood, who are against people who have powers, and the Fruit Street Gang, who are just your average thieves and criminals. Uh, and Eve has sort of offended them in a certain way, as you will learn soon. So in terms of setting, this is where the text is. Uh, we're based in Dregs in this section. And as you can see on the map, the dome is where the uh, Machina fighting happens. So Eve Carpenter, our main character, 17-year-old. Ezekiel, uh, the man that we find in a spaceship. In the Cricket is her logica, so can think, can talk, can answer questions. Kaisa has a dog brain and a robot body, so can bite people, doesn't have to follow the three laws of robotics. Lemon Fresh, best friend, carries around her pop stick, her, her weapon, uh, and is basically everywhere Eve goes. The preacher is trying to catch Eve and kill her. So in terms of the, the part one book, this is what we're going to go through. The prelude, we start, we get our first flashback where we hear and learn that whoever is narrating these flashbacks, their whole family is murdered and their father is the one that is first to be killed. Part one is called A Coin Operated Boy. So prelude's over and part one is called that. We're trying to work out why. We're not really sure at this point, but something to keep in mind as we read on. 1.1 manifest. So basically, this is where we get a really good insight into who our main character is. Eve is, we start on the action. Eve is fighting a big robot called the Goliath. And basically, these mechs, they, if they fritz out, if, uh, if these big robots, the uh, logicas, the, the killing type robots, uh, if they fritz out, uh, then, or they break one of the laws of robotics and kill a human being, uh, then they go to the dome where they have these big fights. And our main character, Eve, is one of the Machina fighters. So she jumps in her robot and they fight. Unfortunately, she's beaten. She tries some good attacks, some good approaches, but it doesn't work out for her. Uh, and the Goliath beats her robot and is about to kill her within the cockpit of her robot. 
uh, but she put, holds out her hand, screams at it, and destroys it using only her mouth, hand, mind powers, which is a brand new revelation for both us and her. So democracy, we, we jump into our, another flashback, Eve's brother, or we assume it's Eve narrating this story. Uh, Alex is killed by the blonde, beautiful man with squeaky boots. And the quote is, none of it is mine, all of it is father, mother, I. So we don't know what that means, but we're trying to work it out. Then Eve goes home. She describes her home in the dregs. We learn about Kaiser, her robot dog, and her close friend, Lemon Fresh. And then they see some ships fighting in the distance. So heading out is what's happening next. But we get a flashback first. Our parents and brothers are dead. Olivia, we think Eve's older sister, is killed by a soldier with a name label that reads Faith. And the quote is, and then there were three. So chasing out into the desert to try and capture these uh, the remains of this ship that has been shot down over in the distance. Eve and Lemon and Kaiser and Cricket, of course, head over. They take their weapons. They're worried about bandits and you know, being, being attacked. They find the ship. There's a man with no arm in the co cockpit. They search him and realize there's a very strange coin slot in the center of his chest. So they take the body with them. Uh, Ty and the Fruit Street Gang turn up, and they sort of have an argument. They threaten them. They, they you know, they argue over whose ship it is to sort of salvage to pick over. Then we have another flashback. Three birds remained, covered in blood, in a cage. Tanya is shot by a male soldier with blue eyes and dark hair. So even her little band, they they go home. Silas is Grandpa Silas is angry because they've been out for so long. Uh, they discuss what to do with the, the man with the slot and no arm. Uh, and Eve suggests maybe he's a lifelike because she, she knows some memories from her little implant in the back of her brain that gives her all sorts of information uh, thanks to Grandpa Silas who installed it. Uh, then all of a sudden the lifelike jumps up, tries to strangle Lemon to death and she pushes him onto a sharp piece of metal and he climbs off without visible pain, though there is some blood-like discharge. Uh, and then we learn his name is Ezekiel and he already knows Silas and he calls Eve Anna, which is very strange. Uh, we also learn that Silas's cancer has gotten worse. Uh, he's been keeping it a secret and he's run out of medicine. So he's coughing up blood. He's not well at this point. Ezekiel tells Silas that Eve has manifested on the feeds, which is their TV, and that people will be coming for her. So Ruin starts with a flashback. Marie, which we think is Eve's sister, is killed by a soldier who Marie recognises as Hope. None above and none below is what Hope says before she kills Marie. Then Ruin. So we're basically Grandpa Silas and Eve's house, where Lemon has been staying for 10 months, we learn. Uh, the Fridge Street Gang and the Brotherhood arrive. The Brotherhood, of course, wants Silas to give up Eve because they know she has powers that they don't like. And the Fridge Street Gang want Ezekiel, who, they, of course, they have stolen from under their noses. And there's a big battle. Eve tries to use her powers to destroy a machina, but nothing happens. And then Ezekiel jumps into action and starts fighting, killing, hitting, shooting, uh, all of the people who have come to collect Eve. So he's defending her and doing a great job at it at super speed. Uh, basically, the gang and the Brotherhood are beaten. Eve uses her powers at last effectively and destroys one of the machina. And all of a sudden, bombs start to fall and the Brotherhood and the Fridge Street gang basically flee and scatter. Another flashback, the impact. All her family is dead beside her. Four perfect soldiers can't take that, which is most precious from them. They kill her. So again, very strange. Impact. So, bombs are falling, people are running, the battle has sort of ceased. Uh, we see the ship that's dropping the bombs has a Gnosis Labs logo label on it. Uh, then a female lifelike appears called Faith, who also knows Silas already. She refers to Ezekiel as her brother, and she and Eve exchange gunshots. So they try to fight, they try and hit one another. Of course, Faith uh, doesn't allow that to happen because she is superhuman, basically. Ezekiel, Faith, and Eve, who climbs into a machine to try and fight, uh, have a big battle. Eve, you know, Faith hits Kaiser away, and he's sort of down in a pile of rubbish, and Eve is trying very hard to get him, to get her back. And then all of a sudden, their house takes off, which is, uh, yep, something that happens, definitely. So it's a spaceship, and it sort of lifts off and heads off into the into the space, I guess. Uh, then Faith kidnaps Grandpa Silas and comes for Eve, and she says, you look good for a dead girl. That's her first sort of spoken interaction with Eve, which is, again, quite 
interesting. Uh, and she tells Eve she has Silas in her flex wing, which we imagine is like a little plane hovering overhead. Uh, and she tells her she's taken them both home. Faith and Eve fight, but Eve is, of course, no match for her. Uh, and so obviously she doesn't win the fight, of course. So the house and their spaceship smashes into something. Then we switch perspectives. So now we're in where we're Ty, uh, and he's, he's sort of the leader, or at least a member of the Fridge Street gang. He's got a bullet in his belly, and we see, meet a character called the Preacher. Uh, and we assume he's a member of the Brotherhood. He sort of looks religious. He's got a copy of the good book in his pocket, his breast pocket. Uh, and Ty says, oh, thank God, Father, you can help me. And then he shoots Ty dead. And then the next part is part two, at which we will start.